Hello everybody, welcome back to Bumble Stitches. This is episode 17 and the eagle-eyed among you will notice that we are in my new craft space here, which I've been busy preparing, was really excited to share with you all. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying thank you very much for coming back if you're a returning viewer and if you're checking me out for the first time, thank you ever so much for checking me out. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And uh, you can also find me on Instagram as Nicola underscore Kerridge. Um, I do have a private account for the time being, but if you um, want to follow me, you're more than welcome. Just um, pop on a request and I'll approve that. Uh, you can also find our Bumble Stitches podcast group in Ravelry under the groups tab. And very, very shortly, there will be a Bumble Stitches Etsy store. Okay, so lots and lots of things to tell you. Um, if I'm a bit fidgety, it's because I've actually got a twirly chair. So if I start twirling, I'll try not to because that would be awfully distracting. But it's still a bit of a novelty at the moment. Okay, so what's been happening? It's been three weeks. Um, I was going to come back in two weeks and podcast again. But I wanted to make sure that everything um, was ready to um, to show you really in my new sort of crafting space so that's why um, it went on another week I went up to Cumbria to the Curious Handmade Country House Retreat which was amazing um, it's my second time there and it didn't um, disappoint at all it was just as good if not better than the first time I went which was back in March fantastic ladies um, Helen and Meta just run the most amazing retreat. It's so welcoming and relaxing. Um, the house itself is stunning. The scenery and the surrounding area in Cumbria is stunning. And we just had the best few days ever knitting, chatting, eating, drinking, relaxing. Um, yes, it was really, really lovely and a bit of a come down to come back home and not have knitting pals to sit and share, um, share a little chat with and and the old glass or two of something nice and some nice little treats to eat. So I'm really missing all the ladies that were at the retreat, but um, hopefully uh, go back next year and see everybody again. Uh, I will start off by, um, I'll talk a little bit more about the retreat in a little while. I just wanted to start out with some works in progress that I have. I don't have any finished objects this week. Um, my knitting has been quite monogamous I would say. Um, I've been working on my Birkin sweater so I'll start off with that as a work in progress and I have completed um, the yoke as you can see the colour work yoke is complete the light's going a bit changey um, seems a bit different now I'm in a different part of the room but you can see that's all done it's a bit curled up at the bottom I popped it onto waste yarn um, the reason being was that I wanted to try it on and make sure that it fitted, which it does. And the other reason was that the um, the colour work section, I was, wasn't was certain I'd been doing it correctly. And what I mean by that is the way I was actually working, I mean the, the pattern and the chart I've, I followed correctly. Um, but it was just really, had I knitted it properly. So what I've done on mine... I'll just show you the reverse so you get what I mean so this is the reverse of the sweater and you can see there hopefully that I've kind of carried the yarn um, and woven it into the back of my knitting as I knitted it which to be honest is the way I've always done I've not done a lot of color work but it's the way I've always done it so um, yeah I assumed that was the, the right way to do it it'd be a nice neat finish and then I um, looked into it a little bit more and realised that most people that do colour work um, do strands and leave floats across the back of their work. So I was a bit worried that it wouldn't work out okay. So the plan is now to um, block this piece. It hasn't been blocked yet because I wanted to have it to show you today. So after this um, podcast is done, I'm going to block this and pin it out and then just hopefully the stitches will be a bit more even. I don't know if you can see. I'm hoping it will just even things out a bit in blocking. And then if I'm happy with it, I'll continue, put it back on the needles and carry on knitting down um, for the body and the sleeves of the sweater. I'm hoping it will be okay. Um, I just wanted to share with you 
um, the other sort of colour work project that I did a while ago, which I think lots of people did, which is the Barble Hat, which was um, for Shetland Wool Week a couple of years ago, designed by Donna Smith. And I was really pleased with how this turned out. But if I just pop it inside out, you'll see it's pretty much, I've done it the same way. I've sort of like woven the stitches in and this turned out fine. So fingers crossed that the, um, the yoke of my Birkin will be fine too. So anyway, that's just a little bit of a, an aside there. I'll just show you the pattern. It's from Lane Magazine issue two. Actually, both my whips are out of this magazine at the moment. And it's this sweater here, the Birkin. So, yeah, next step, block it, make sure it's okay, and then I can carry on, pop it back on the needles and carry on knitting down. This is all being knitted in um, John Arban Knit by Numbers, uh, which is just fabulous yarn. I did mention it, I talked about it quite a bit on the last podcast. But value for money, softness, range of colours, just everything I think it's absolutely amazing and I would definitely use it again um, and it's also I've, I've been looking into colour work a little bit more recently since I started this and apparently it's important to have a yarn that's sort of sticky or that grabs the stitch next to it so that the colour work is cohesive so you don't want like a slippery or silky yarn because the um, the colour work won't work as well so and this does fit the bill although it's quite soft it's not as um, sort of rustic as some of the Shetland yarns that you can get I think it's worked quite well because it does have um, sort of that element of stickiness to it while still being soft so yeah I'll get this blocked and then I shall report back to you um, on the next podcast hopefully I will be knitting down the body and won't have had to um, rip it all out and start again I really really hope I don't have to do that so that's my first um, work in progress and it's been living in my fringe supply bag and I don't know if you can see this beautiful pin um, which I got at the retreat uh, which is the Shawl Society, Curious Handmade Shawl Society so um, I got a pin at the retreat which lives on my bag so now I've got two pins I think they're becoming a bit of an obsession for lots of people aren't they so I'm always on the lookout for some nice pins Okay, my next work in progress is living in this lovely bag from Little Bobbins and it's the Birds of a Feather Shawl by Andrea Mowry. Now I should probably have um, sewn the ends in on this before I shared it because it has got quite a few ends where the yarn has changed. I'm knitting this with, um, as the pattern calls for, a mohair and um, a four ply fingering weight and these are both from fine fish yarns I'll just see if I've got the ball bands in here I think I mentioned this last time on my sort of ready to cast on um, so there's the tag fine fish yarns and the the mohair is the aura lace which is 72 28 mohair and silk blend and that's grunge pink so that's this one it's like a grey, sort of grey, mauvey colour. Beautiful and it's light as a cloud. And this colourway here is called Maven and this is a merino silk cashmere blend. So they're all from Fine Fish Yarns. I'll just show you where I'm at at the moment. Okay. So you can see, like quite a few of the Andrew and Maori um, shawls, it starts out at the at the point, goes through that awkward stage where it looks a bit like underwear, and then it's got alternating sections of the um, the mohair and the um, fingering weight yarn, with some lacy sections and some garter sections on a centre spine. So I'm really really pleased with how it's knitting up. You can see how beautiful that mohair is and it is really really soft I was worried it might be a little bit scratchy um, but it isn't and it's completely sort of fine it's got like an ethereal feel to it really absolutely stunning so that's coming along quite nicely 
and just got a little progress keeper on there which from Chapel View, Chapel View Crafts on Etsy, little slice of pink cake and a little stitch marker mark in the centre which I got from Jules, So Sweet Violet. So yeah that's been keeping me going um, while the Birkin is off the, the needles and ready to be blocked so I should carry on knitting on this to keep me going. Um, it's a nice simple knit, it's nice for watching TV and it's you know just a break from the colour work. Although the colour work is done on the other um, on my sweater, this was a little bit of time out while when the colour work was getting a little bit too much. Some of the rows on the on the yoke of the sweater were three colours per row and the yarn was getting in such a tangle it was yeah some rows were quite an ordeal but so loving this Birds of a Feather by Andrea Mowry. Again it is from this magazine, Lane. I'll show you the image. Just put a sticky note in there. And that's the shawl there. And that is um, also available as a paid for pattern on Ravelry, um, the Birds of a Feather shawl. If you wanted to check that out. So I should just pop this out of the way. Okay. Right, I hope this is working out well for you guys watching because it's very strange being in a completely different um area for podcasting I feel a little bit it all feels a bit brand new again so I hope it's working out for you and it's not irritating me sort of like leaning which which way and that so um okay so what is going to be next up well I shouldn't really cast on any more whips because I have got a sweater and a shawl but whilst we were at the retreat, lots of the ladies that had knit the So Faded sweater by Andrea Mowry brought them along and we all wore them one day and had our photos taken. So that was really, really good fun. There were quite a few of us, um, probably about 10 people that had the So Faded sweater and brought it with them, which was quite remarkable for you know a pattern to have um, captured people's imagination so much and so many people wanted to knit it and got it completed and I don't have a photo of it on my Instagram but if you check out So Sweet Violet, um, Jules's Instagram feed, she's got a photo on her on her Instagram of all us ladies wearing us so faded outside the house at Melmaby in Cumbria where the retreat's held and we tried to arrange the lineup, if you like of us wearing our sweaters so that it kind of made a, a fade from left to right I think it was um, so have a look at that that was that was fun it was so nice to um, see all the different variations there were some sort of quite bright ones and some muted tones and somewhere in between and some had knitted the cropped version some had knitted the full length version some had done full length sleeves some had done the elbow length sleeve so it was really really nice to see all the variations there what it has done is spurred a couple of us on to knit another one um, so Amanda who's Knitting Mummy on Instagram I think she cast hers on yesterday another one and I'd already ordered a kit from Baron Voller a so faded sweater kit which arrived after I'd already started my previous one that I finished so I popped it away in stash but when I saw she cast another one on I said well okay I might as well join you we could have a little mini knit along so I think uh, a new so faded sweater will be uh, the next cast on for me I've got the yarn here, it isn't a, a recent acquisition, as I said I'd ordered it and by the time it was dyed and turned up I'd started another one. It's quite uh, a different colourway really for me but I really really liked it. So there are four skeins in the kit, these four here. So going from the sort of quite grey and fuchsia pink sort of light greys through to deep charcoals and almost black in there and some little tiny pops of blue that you can probably see as well as some blue at this end and then to the I'm guessing the next one would be I'm guessing it would go that way and then down to the I'm trying to hold them all it's a bit difficult more skeins of yarn so I'm guessing it would go that way and I would do my last fade I did light at the top and graduated down to dark but this one I think I'll do in reverse so I'll do the dark grey at the top um, into the um, blue 
which has got the greys in again and the blacks and the fuchsia starts coming through a bit more in this one. Then to the full on fuchsia, this is a juggling act, which again has got all the tones of the other skeins in it because it was dyed as a so faded kit. And then finally down to the lightest, which has got a lot of natural with the hints of um, pink and blue and not so much of the darker greys in it. So I think I will be getting these um, caked up later on today and get that cast on because that was such a fun sweater to knit and I would like to do another one. So I think this time um, I would do rather than the full length long sleeve version, I think this time I might do um, a version that's a bit more, um, a bit What's the word? I always get negative E's and positive E's mixed up. It's a bit more closer fitting. My other one's quite loose. There's lots of negative E's. So I might do it with less um, negative E's so it's a, a more fitted um, sweater. And I might go for the elbow length sleeves as well on that. So this was all from Bear and Voller. As I mentioned, um, it's just called Fade Club. There isn't There aren't individual colourways on these tags. And it's the Bear Everyday Merino which is 100% merino wool and there's a tag there as you can see it's just fade club there were various different options um, yeah I don't know what came over me I went with something completely different so I'm hoping that will turn out really nice and be a nice um, sweater to wear with sort of black jeans and things like that so that will be up on the needles next I feel like I'm really racing through this. I think it's because, I'm, as I said, I'm in this new position. It makes me feel a little bit new. Okay. Before I decided to knit the Sofa Aiden sweater, I had planned to knit um, a Hohi Locatelli sweater. And I think it's not just me. Everybody um, on Instagram and everyone I've spoken to at the retreat and spoken to in general, everyone's on this massive sort of sweater kick at the moment. Which is great because I've got so many shawls and socks and things like that that I don't really wear that much. But sweaters something I will actually wear. So this is the other um, sweater I've got lined up, which is the Boxy and Buttony by Hohi Locatelli. And you can see it's a variation of the Boxy sweater. It's got some nice detailing down the front and the little buttons, um, just like faux buttons on the sleeves. And that's the, um, I've got this all caked up. I think I did mention this on the last podcast. So I'm probably repeating myself. And this is yarn from the wool barn. And this beautiful golden camel silk four ply yarn from there, which is absolutely delicious. Who knows, I may even cast them both on. There are no rules, right? Just our own. So that will be up. Um, two so it all it could potentially end up with three sweater works in progress and the shawl um but i don't know about you guys i've recently because i've been reorganizing in this room i went through all my sewing stash knitting stash um things that i'd finished shawls and things like that that had been completed and realized that i don't actually wear them which maybe trying to work out maybe that makes me just um, a process knitter that I just like to knit you know the process of knitting the pattern um, choosing the yarn and buying the yarn and all the thing you know all that goes with it but don't actually not that worried about the end product if that makes sense um, some of the shawls that I've made I do wear but not many there's a lot more that I don't wear so it led me to wonder what I'm actually going to do with them all because they're kind of mounting up a bit so I need to have a little think about how that works. It won't certainly won't stop me from casting on more because that's what you do, isn't it? Same as the birds of a feather. I think I will probably, I think that's one that I will wear though, for sure. But it's so, the situation is so bad that I got a shawl out of um, storage, if you like, a couple of weeks ago and found that a moth had eaten a hole in it. I'd never even worn it. I'd knitted it, blocked it. It was beautiful hedgerow yarns, um, yarns in it, and it had a hole in it that I could poke my finger through. So that was really disappointing. And I thought, well, that 
you know, kind of defeats the object of all the time and, and money and effort that you put into knitting something. If you don't wear it and then it ends up getting damaged anyway, it's kind of a bit disappointing. So I need to have a little, I think I need to be more mindful of what I knit uh, and make sure it's either intended for somebody as a gift or something that I definitely want to have the end product for something to wear for myself or another outlet if I can think of um, you know for, for, for that product at the end rather than just being folded up and popped in the wardrobe so I am trying to be a bit mindful of that it's the same with socks I've knitted loads and loads of socks and other than well very very rarely if I'm just relaxing in sort of PJs after having a, a bath or whatever on winter evenings I pop a pair of hand knit socks on but I don't wear them with with my shoes or my converse or anything so yeah it's a bit of a strange one but um yeah it's not gonna stop me knitting that's for sure because I like it too much right so I was talking about the retreat earlier the retreat was amazing as I said and we had a mini marketplace and some of the um, ladies that were also makers brought along some of their things for us all to buy at the retreat which was really really cool so I didn't take anything along this time I did take some project bags last time but I wasn't quite prepared so I didn't take anything along so I was just there as a shopper which was fab and Tracy from Nora George Jones was there which was so cool um, Carmen from Yarn Story in Bath um, brought yarn along from her shop um, so sweet violet bags were there made by the lovely Jules which was incredible uh, Meta did some hand dyed yarn which she brought along Julie from Suffolk Socks was there with some um, project bags and, and yarn from her store so I hope I haven't missed anybody out I'm just trying to think if I have um, oh and Helen was there with her little um, Shaw Society pins too so there were lots of lovely things for us all to buy and we also got lots of lovely gifts as well people were so generous so I've put everything in a little um, container here, kept it all to one side and it's been difficult not to sort of delve in and use some of the things in there, particularly when you see some of the things that I'm going to show you. It's a miracle they're actually still there but I wanted to save them to share with you all. So I'm going to start off first with a pattern. I'm going to take it out of this plastic wallet because that would be a bit reflective and this is the Wildflower Hills Hill Shawl um, which Helen designed especially for the retreat for Curious Handmade and it's an absolutely stunning shawl and she's designed this particular shawl using yarn from the Fibre Company they also sponsor the retreat they are a company based in Cumbria so it's particular particularly fitting um, and lovely for them to support the retreat the way they do and each of us um, were given very very generously by the fibre company two skeins of the Aramore light yarn to knit Helen's pattern with so I've got this beautiful um, blue which is called Odrin I'll try and show you that so you can see that's the name of that one and the colourway of the grey is Glenvey Castle so you can see these are lovely shades of blue and grey and they've got a Donegal um, sort of I don't know if they're nips or nups or whatever they call them but the blend of the yarn is actually 80% wool 10% silk and 10% cashmere they sample that Helen had at the retreat which had been knitted up and blocked was so drapey and squishy and absolutely beautiful so I'm looking forward to getting this cast on now that I've shown you the pattern and the skeins and the shawl is knitted on quite large needles I think it's about 5.5 mil needles so it's going to be a nice sort of, sort of chunky fairly fast knit um, which will be a good contrast to some of the four ply jumpers that I'm knitting at the moment. So that was just, we were so lucky to get two full skeins of yarn and the pattern. 
so that was in the uh, in the goodie bag at the retreat which is just amazing to get that you know as soon as we walked in virtually the bags were on the back of our chairs so that was just fabulous and also I'm just going to pop this here and have a little delve inside also in the goodie bags we had these super cute little pouches from David's Tea which I've been dying to try and I've resisted these so they've done really really well I think and these were kindly um, given to us all one each um, by a lovely lady called Dale who flew over from Canada especially for the retreat and I think she was also going to Yarndale so thank you Dale that was so kind of you and the amazing thing is, not only is this a really cute little pouch with um, sheep on, which will make a fab little notions pouch afterwards, but it's filled with David's tea. And I've heard so much about it from other podcasters and people have mentioned how nice um, their tea is. But of course, you can't get it here in the UK. So it was it's really nice to be able to have the opportunity to try it out. So the flavours inside are organic blueberry jam and just peachy and pear blossom i'm really looking forward to that pear is one of my most favorite flavors this one is just beat it which beetroot now me and beetroot don't really get on but i will try it and see because sometimes things aren't necessarily the way you expect and the final one is strawberry rhubarb parfait which again sounds absolutely delicious so I just hope I don't end up with um, a real fancy for David's tea once these um, sachets are gone because, yeah, I'm not going to be able to source any more. But nonetheless, the chance to have some and in this ridiculously cute little pouch was just amazing. So thanks again, Dale. That was lovely. Also in our goodie bag, just rummaging in here. It was a bit like Christmas, to be honest. There was a, let me try and find everything that was in here. I mentioned earlier that Meta, who runs the retreat with Helen, she had been um, dyeing using some natural dyes and she also has an allotment. So some of the um, plants and flowers that she used to dye the yarn naturally was actually from her own allotment. So that is pretty cool. So this little skein that I had in my um, goodie bag was dyed with dock leaves. It gives this beautiful mustardy yellow colour. And yeah, she mentions on the tag it was gathered on her allotment. So that's, you know, that's really homemade, isn't it? Home grown and home dyed and just beautiful. So I think that's gonna be living in my crochet blanket at some point. I think it's, I think the yarn is the right sort of way. I'll make it work, but I just wanna make sure that I keep that in my blanket and I know they've got a special row of Meta's um, hand dyed yarn so that was beautiful I had another mini in my bag as well which kind of tones with um, with Meta's and this is a little mini that was dyed especially for the retreat by Tracy of Nora George so hi Tracy if you're watching this is called retreat how fab is that so just a little skein of yarn called retreat and again, that's going to go in my blanket so that I've got happy memories of the retreat. It's nice to just have these special little skeins and know that you can, you know, look back in the blanket and remember where you got them and who gave them to you and all the memories that are associated with them. So that's beautiful. Thank you, Tracy. That's so kind. So, and it didn't stop there. We were then given... Um, Juliet Suffolk Socks runs a yarn club and a range of hand-dyed yarns that she does called the Yarn Tart. Uh, her yarns are beautiful. She also does a range of quite quirky and cheeky accessories, um, project bags and bits and pieces like that in the range. And she gave us all um, a coaster to put our tea or coffee on. So who'd done it? A Yarn Tart did. So that's so cool and that's going to live on my desk in my craft room now. So when I've got my cup of David's tea, courtesy of Dale, it'll be sitting on my coaster, courtesy of Julie. So thank you, Julie. That was really kind. And if you're interested in that range, because it is quite, so it's quite quirky and quite fun. So pop along over to Suffolk Socks 
and I know that Julie's got project bags and kits and things like that going on. So thank you Julie, that was lovely. Then in my little bag of wonders, um, Jewels of So Sweet Violet was at the retreat and it was just so lovely to meet her in person. So hi Jules. Um, and she really so kindly and so generously gave each of us a little selection of Hotel Chocolat chocolates. And they are a fruited collection. And can you believe these are still in the packet? Because I can't, because me and chocolate are just like best buds. So, but I did want to share them with you all and just show you the beautiful things that we received. And Jules has um, popped on a couple of little progress keepers. One's a pumpkin, like a little white sort of ceramic pumpkin and a little jeweled stitch marker there. And I like the fact that the findings are all sort of in gold. So they're, they're lovely, sort of nice for autumn. Really, really pretty. So now I can eat the chocolate because I've shared them with you all. But thank you, Jules. That was so generous. Okay. There was also a table prize. Not table prize, table present at dinner one night. And I have taken this out of the cellophane, so I hope you can see. And this is a beautiful little handmade lavender sachet that Paula snail garden on instagram she made one of these each for everybody so thank you paula it's beautiful and it smells delicious and she popped it on a little card with um some stitch markers as well and if you can see if i hold them like that you can see the sort of like pink jeweled stitch markers so again so so generous so we were really really spoiled So other than the things that we were given very kindly by all the generous participants, there was the Billy Marketplace. Tracy was there from Nora George, I've mentioned this already, and she had some stunning yarns, absolutely beautiful. The first one that I had to snag was this skein here, which I think she shared on her Instagram before we went to the retreat, and this is called Eggnog. And it's a super sock, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So that's the tag. And I think this is one that is going to make an appearance in her shop. It wasn't a retreat exclusive. And I'm going to try and get it. I'm going to take the label off so that I can show you. Just put the label on really well so I'm having a bit of a struggle getting it off. Here we go. So just wanted to show you the beautiful colours that are in this. So as well as the sort of colours you'd expect for eggnog, these sort of like deep browns and tones there and all the natural sort of creaminess of it. What I liked about it particularly was the sort of purpley speckles, which are absolutely gorgeous. And nobody does speckles like Tracy. Her yarn is just amazing. I'm sure you've all tried it. If you haven't, you need to. This is just beautiful. And I've already decided this is going to be my skein that I cast on my Christmas Eve um, sock cast on this year. Um, again, you're probably all aware of it. It's something that Danny of Little Bobbin started a few years back and I think so many people do it now. It's become sort of part of their Christmas tradition. So yes, Christmas Eve, this will be my cast on yarn for my socks. So that was one skein that I bought in the marketplace. While I was at Tracy's um, store, if you like, this caught my eye, which is Sugar Rose and Raspberry. Now, these colours together are absolutely stunning. This is the mohair. Tracy's mohair is 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. And this is the super sock base again, like the eggnog. And the, um, the dark spots and speckles in the Sugar Rose is the same dye as in the raspberry so you can see these two absolutely meant to be sisters and the plan is um, although the birds of a feather shawl needs two skeins of fingering and one skein of mohair I do have another pink in my stash or a natural possibly that I will add to these beautiful sisters 
and perhaps do another birds of a feather because I'm really enjoying that and I like the look of it so yeah it could potentially be a Christmas present for somebody so but this yarn is absolutely stunning she also had um, a very deep purple skein of this mohair as well which I was tempted to get to go along with the eggnog but this one won in the end but how beautiful are these and how lucky because I know how quickly Tracy's um, updates sell out so to have her yarn all laid out in front of us was a real treat and quite a highlight of the um, of the few days that we were there so looking forward to knitting with those I've got quite a pile of yarn going on here I also bought some of this sock yarn from Julie Suffolk Socks and she was knitting um, some socks with this and um, Deb was knitting some socks with this yarn as well and I couldn't believe the softness of it it's um, I think it's a German brand Grundle hot socks and it's actually got cashmere in it which is unbelievable because what is, it is believable because of how soft it is but it's unbelievable because of the price it's really really reasonable um, this colorway oh there isn't it's just called 08 but you can see you have it's 50 gram um, ball so sort of two to make a, a pair of socks I guess you could probably get away with one if you use the, the coordinating heels toes and cuffs and didn't make your socks too long but got two anyway and at the side there it just gives you an idea of how it's going to knit up so it sort of self pattern sort of makes a, a stripe stripey pattern but in the ball it doesn't do it justice but when you see it knit up and feel it it's, it's really beautiful yarn so that is available on um, Julie's website at Suffolk Socks so that was some more yarn that I purchased and last but not least, um, Jules was there and she had some of her beautiful bags that she makes. And to see them all lined up um, was just, yeah, just like eye candy really, all her beautiful Liberty bags. And again, I'm obviously not particularly quick on the quick off the mark when there's an update and despite trying every single time that Jules has one of her updates I never ever managed to get a bag so to be able to actually get a bag was just the best thing ever so I've left it till last and here it is and this is the acorn bird beautifully stamped with a little tiny acorn in his beak with the Liberty fabric and the beautiful tassel and on the reverse just the little feather which is so so pretty and Jules's bags are just a joy inside her little stamped So Sweet Violet logo and the coordinating fabric on the um, pocket edge and I also got a couple of little matching lavender sachets so one with the bird and one with the acorn and they've got the Liberty fabric on the back and they smell gorgeous so I popped those inside so again I've been saving this and not using it until I shared it with you all but now I'm going to pop something in this today probably one of my new cast lines is going to live in this bag and I was lucky enough that after everybody had, everyone that wanted one of Jules's bag had bought one that um, I was able to pick up another one which yeah I know but I wasn't being greedy because it was actually for my mum I bought it as a present for her so I bought two um, fabrics that I really, really liked, knowing that whichever one I had, I'd be more than delighted with. So I let mum have, um, I let her have choose of which one she liked. And hers was more um, peach and grey Liberty fabric. And I got her a skein of, um, I can't remember the make of the yarn that I bought her. It was one from uh, a yarn story. It was beautiful though. It was cashmere and silk and a beautiful blend. So hopefully um, mum will enjoy knitting with those in her lovely So Sweet Violet bag. So thank you Jules for bringing your bags. It's just a treat to be able to have one finally and have it come live with me. And a little bird will be very happy living here in my new craft space. So thank you. So that really is the end of the um, purchases from the retreat. So yeah, I did go a little bit mad. 
but I challenge anybody to have been there and not done the same because the array of things in front of us was just absolutely incredible. All beautiful makers, beautiful dyers, everything is just, you know, made with such care and detail and is a joy to have and also to support those ladies in their, um, in their making businesses. I'm going to pop this back now. It'd be lovely to use all my things though now that I've been saving up. Okay, so we've gone through things that I've bought, some works in progress. Um, at the retreat, as I mentioned, we had the mini marketplace. We had a couple of workshops, which were really good fun. Um, Helen did a, uh, a creativity workshop where we created a mood board. And that was really interesting. Um, we each created... Um, a collage if you like a mood board using images from magazines and publications and each person's individual style really came out during that exercise and we had sort of quite a good discussion about creativity and interestingly enough as I just mentioned there were some fabulous makers and creators at the retreat but interestingly enough almost everybody considered themselves not to be creative which just shows you how we all have a completely skewed perception of ourselves as opposed to what other people, you know, the way other people see us. So that was a really thought provoking workshop and really, really good fun. Uh, Meta ran a basket um, workshop using yarn and cord to um, make little coiled baskets. I failed dismally at that. I did try. Um, it wasn't really for me. I felt myself getting a bit frustrated, so I kind of gave up while the going was good and carried on my knitting. But some of the ladies made some beautiful little baskets and have learnt that skill. So maybe it's something I should go back and try again uh, in the in my own atmosphere where I can have a little tantrum if it doesn't go right. But everything at the retreat was wonderful. We just had the best time ever, and I really do miss everybody. Okay. Since I've done my craft space, I've had a renewed vigour for my sewing. Before I had the area that I've got now, I would have to get my sewing machine out, take it downstairs, all the associated paraphernalia, all my tools and cutting mat and everything. And if you, if you sew yourselves, which I'm sure quite a lot of you do, you realise there's quite a mess is made when you're sewing ironing boards, sewing machines, everything. It just gets everywhere and everything gets covered in thread and you make a right old mess. And if you have to do that in a shared space and then clear everything away after each session, it kind of takes the shine off it a little bit. And I found I was doing less and less sewing for that reason. So I'm really, really lucky and consider myself fortunate to be able to have a dedicated area now to do my sewing. Um, my sewing machine's here, and if you can just see, this this is an old. Um, I made this patchwork cover for my old sewing machine quite a few years ago. It's a little bit, um, what's the word, naive in its construction. The patchwork and quilting. I didn't really have much of an idea, and I even attempted to pipe the, put some piping in on the joins. But it's got that sort of charm to it, so it's staying. And it was made out of some scraps of cat kids and fabric that I really liked. But yes, yeah, so my sewing machine is here now, so it's on my desk, it's ready to go at any point, which is such a, you know, it makes a huge difference to be able to come in, sit down on my twirly chair, switch on the sewing machine and just get on with some sewing. So, um, you know, it, it has spurred me on and I, I know it was a really long time ago that I shared with you that I was going to start an Etsy shop and get some bag, project bags in it. But it didn't happen and well now it's going to happen so in the next couple of weeks I will give an update on Instagram when it's good to go um, I hope to start off with about 10 bags or so pop them in the shop um, some of them I have had made for a while I just made a couple of extras yesterday you've seen these fabrics before but I just wanted to get these bags finished up so they've got my little Bumble Stitches logo on. And these are the birdhouse design and the little bumblebees in the foliage down at the bottom. 
And these are zippered ones, zippered project bags with a little B. Why do things always spin round exactly when you don't want them to? With the little B on the zip pull and they're lined with white cotton fabric. Quite roomy, you can easily fit a couple of skeins. Let's pop these beautiful Nora, Nora George skeins in there. So yes, there's two skeins in there and, and plenty of room. So I did that one yesterday and the same thing, but with the little gnomes by the wishing wells at the top of that one. Again, the same sort of detailing on that back and front. And then these other ones, I think you'd seen before, these are all just variations, but with the striped, these have got the striped bottom and striped lining, and then there's blue ones with the bird houses. So they will be going into my Etsy shop soon. My Etsy shop doesn't exist yet, but it will do, so I'm going to get it all set up. And I've been strict myself this time. I think it was um, on Stranded podcast with Amy. I think somebody had asked her a question about how she got set up with uh, her Stranded Dye Works business. And I think she said it was a case of setting a date and sticking to it. And that's what I have in mind um, to just actually make a date, work towards it and, and get the thing launched and get it done rather than an, some loose, open-ended, never sort of date on things. So there will be those, they will be going in the Etsy shop. I've ordered lots of packaging materials, tissue paper and mailing bags and bits and bobs. So... It's all exciting stuff and it's all actually going to happen. And I don't know if I can reach, I'm just going to try and twirl around. That's, this is the benefit of the twirly chair. Because I've also got some patchwork. Sorry, I have got some patchwork bags in. And these, these are sort of still in progress. They haven't become bags yet. They're still in their baby stages. Um, but these are the fabrics from the range in a patchwork. And this is a lovely navy blue um, linen. It looks a bit like denim but it's actually navy blue linen and yeah so there'll be some of those as well. And when I got all inspired the ideas really started flying so I've got some beautiful um, fabric on order for Christmas. Can we say Christmas yet? I know we haven't had Halloween or bonfire night but I've got some beautiful Christmas fabric on order and some hopefully really nice ideas for project bags with that. And I've still got some Alice in Wonderland fabric, which I shared ages ago that's sitting in my stash. So, yeah, hopefully there'll be some things that appeal to most people and that you'll all like. So, and I'll be doing some different um, variants on the bags as well. And maybe some sort of like bucket style because I was really quite, I quite like this fabric bucket that I actually bought in the um, Calf Kidston outlet shop. It's really really handy um, this one's lined in the sort of like they I think they call it oil cloth it's like the white clean but the outside is just fabric and I thought something like that you know if you're knitting a sweater or a blanket at home and you don't necessarily need to transport it anywhere you can just pop all your skeins and bits and pieces in there and have it next to you and it's really nice just to reach into so I'm thinking of some things like that maybe for the shop so many ideas so just need more time really but in the um, spirit of sharing because sharing is caring um, in case anybody doesn't know and is interested in the UK the Calf Kidston outlet shop is actually based at St Neots in Cambridgeshire and if you google it if you google Calf Kidston um, St Neots it'll come up with a postcode and the address and they're um, factory outlet shop is fab for some bargains like this and they have all the handbags and purses and luggage and clothing and household stuff so if you're into Kath Kidson and you're sort of you know within driving distance of that it's well worth checking out and the other thing which was um, a little tip passed by Emma at, when we were at the retreat is if you're at the other end of the country in Lancaster there is a factory outlet shop that sells Liberty print fabric so google that as well to get the postcode it's just literally five minutes off the M6 at Lancaster so yes just thought I'd share those little gems with you because it's nice to to know okay I've taught myself horse really so I didn't bring a drink up it's been lovely catching up and 
I know you can't see much of my space, but here it is. And it's, it does look, I'm pleased at how pretty it looks, but it's more about being dedicated to me and to making. So yeah, I think it's gonna be many a happy hour spent here making bags and bits and bobs and winding yarn and just generally crafting my heart out. So yeah, really, really happy. I'll try and get back in about two weeks time to show you how I'm getting on with my works in progress and show you any other things that I've made. In the meantime, thank you ever so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.